Hi everybody, today I'm going to share with you guys how I control relays using Raspberry Pi and a shift register. Of course, you can control the relay by using the GPIO pin directly without using the shift register. The main advantage of using shift register is that it can reduce the number of GPIO pin required to control a lot of arrays. This is typically useful when in an advanced or complex project where you require to control more hardware and you have limited GPIO pins available for, for you to use. The shift register we are using is the 74HC595N. The advantage of this register is that it has an output latch. This means that the output will only change when all the input are ready. This diagram shows the layout of this chip register IC chip layout. We are using all the output from QA to QH. The data input is a serial in which is pin 14 SER. Take note of pin 13 and pin 10. Pin 13 is an output enable, it's an active, active low pin, so it must be low in order to output to enable the output. While well, pin 10 is a clear function. Since we are not going to clear the output, therefore we should make it high all the time. For pin 9, we are not using, but it can be used to cast 8 relays in the board. Below is an array of LEDs just to show the status of the output register. Now let us take a look on how we connect the Raspberry Pi to the shift register. We can see that we will connect pin 1, the pre 3, to the pin 16 VCC of the shift register, followed by the pin 19 of the GPIO, MOSI, which is stand for Master Out Safe In, to the pin 14 of the shift register and then the pin 23 of the Raspberry Pi to the pin 11 followed by the GPIO 25 which is pin 22 connect to the R clock of pin 12 at the shift register this GPIO pin 25 is used to latch or to control the output of the shift register and definitely we also need to connect the ground the output of the shift register will then connect to the relay module box. Right now, let us take a look on the actual connection. From here, you can see the Raspberry Pi with the GPIO pins connected to the breadboard here. We didn't need is a shift register inside the breadboard. And the outputs are connected to here. And you will see that all the LEDs, the array of LEDs, and the output will also connected to a board of relays. Take note of this relay board. It is basically a active flow relay board, which means that when you specify a zero to the input, the relay will be turned on. When you specify a one to the input, the relay will be turned off. Right now you can see that the shift register output is all zero. Therefore, the relay, each relay is all turned on at here. Now let us take a look on the Python source code on how we control the relays. First, we need to import the SPI development library and of course we also need to import the GPIO library here. We will set up the pin 22 to control the register R clock pin which is pin number 12. Then we also need to open the SPI ports so that we can communicate the shift register through the SPI protocol. This is a very simple application. It's just shift the bit one by one in order to turn on the relay one by one. And you can see in the wall loop, the wall loop is a infinity wall loop. And every time the wall loop executes, the I data variable which contain the value one will be shift to the number of time of I count. 
and of course this will turn on the relay one by one in the sequence when the application quick it will close the GPI sorry the SPI and the GPIO now let us execute the Python script and see how the relay works in the actual circuit I'm going to execute the application and you will see that the LED in this relay will be inverted as shown in this array of LEDs let us start the application now Now let us try on another application that uh, control the relay in the binary counting up sequence. Let us see how this thing works. The advantage of using a shift register to control the array is that we can control more relays compared to the available GPIO pins available in the Raspberry Pi. This video assumes that you are familiar with Raspberry Pi and know how to install the Python engine and the SPI libraries. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time again. Bye.